again, aspiring Richmond scientists, and welcome to another edition of RPS at Home, fifth grade science. This is week nine. Today, we're going to be reviewing a little bit and adding some new material. So, let me shrink my head and let's get started. Once again, I am Mr. Jackson from Southampton Elementary School, and we are still talking about ecosystems. Uh, I will continue what Mr. Pryor talked about last week and add a little more information. So, let's go ahead and get started. What do you see here? I see somewhere I'd like to take a fishing pole and try to catch some fish, maybe sit over here and enjoy the scenery, nature, all these beautiful things going on here. So, what this is, is an ecosystem. So what we have to do is think about the word ecosystem. An ecosystem, or review, is all the living and non-living components in an environment. So thinking about that picture, what are all the living and non-living things that you can think of here? And how do they interact? What are the relationships? Now. Here is some third grade review. So, Mr. Pryor talked about life cycles last week. I want to talk about a predator-prey relationship. So, a predator is an organism that eats other organisms. A synonym for this is a consumer. Prey is the organism being eaten by another or food for another. So, as you think about ecosystems, as you think about relationships, adaptations, populations, communities, energy flows, and habitats, I want you to start thinking about something else. Mr. Pryor talked about life cycle. So a life cycle is a series of changes in the life of an organism. So you can think of this as baby to adult. You can think of this as adults having babies and completing the cycle. So a cycle in science is like a pattern in math. Patterns repeat. In science, cycles repeat. So here comes our new word for this week. And the word is niche. It's not niche, it's niche. It rhymes with witch and ditch. So, fancy word, easy definition. A niche is an organism's role in an ecosystem. So, let's think of a synonym for the word niche. Niche is the organism's job. So, when you see the word niche, please insert the word job, and things will become much clearer. So, let's recap. Here is a food web. A food web are overlapping food chains. But, let's think about the predator-prey relationship. Who are the predators here? Usually, they're the ones on the top. The bigger ones are eating the medium ones, and the medium ones are eating the smaller ones. So the prey is usually the smaller things, and the predators are usually the bigger things, but there's a bigger picture here. And the bigger picture is the predator-prey relationship can be reversed to prey-predator sometimes. So it's when you see a picture like this, don't think that these are the top predatory animals. They are in this example, but uh, boys and girls, there's always something bigger that could come along and eat these guys. So they might be predators. These might be predators for these bugs, but when the relationship flips and things change, Predator can become prey, but prey can become the predator. And this is where that word niche comes in. 
But before that, let's think of a chicken life cycle. Hopefully your teacher has raised chickens in your classroom. I've done it and it was fantastic to have these little chickens running all around the room and the building and just getting children to hold these things. But for this example, let's think of a chicken life cycle. The adult lays an egg. The egg turns into an embryo. And the strange thing here, if you've ever wondered what, what interrupts this process, why you can put eggs in the fridge and they don't have these embryos inside them, well, they just took the heat off. They took it out of the warmth. So that's why the chicken sits on the eggs to keep them warm. You take that warmth off and put them in the fridge, you stop this cycle. So that's where we get those yummy, delicious scrambled eggs from. They just stopped keeping them under the heat of the chicken. So the egg turns into the embryo, the embryo turns into a hatchling, the hatchling turns into um, the smaller chick. Come on, little box, disappear. And then the bigger hatchling turns into an adult, a chick. There we go. That thing would never disappear. So. Here is a life cycle, but now I want you to think of that word niche. So the word niche is job. So what is the job of the organism in the ecosystem? That's what I want you to think about. That is our lesson for the day. So real quick, what is the job for the niche of the mother chicken. To eat, to lay eggs, to sleep, to take care of itself. But the more interesting thing here is in a life cycle, the job or the role of the organism changes through its life cycle. So as an adult, it's got a certain job. What's the job of the egg? Take care of itself. What's the job of the embryo? Get bigger. What's the job of the hatchling? Crack out of that sucker and start walking around and figuring out what's going on. What's the job of the chick? To get bigger. So what I want you to contemplate or think about is the role of the organism. Things to think about. So, let's see what we're doing today. Today, you will look at a video of a backyard ecosystem. This video can be accessed by clicking on it and clicking on it again. Here it is. This is a backyard ecosystem. So here's somebody's backyard. That's a heck of a backyard. I like that. So we have beautiful flowers. We have some evergreens. We have some invertebrates. We have a vertebrate. We have an ecosystem. We have water. So living and non-living things sharing relationships. They built a nice little house for it's going to be a bird house. I really don't know what that is. There's some koi. There's a frog again, amphibian. So what's he going to do? He's going to find some dinner. Mm. So I saw an adaptation right there. His, his or her long tongue stuck to it, pulled it right in. That was a cricket right there. It's constantly wet. It's an amphibian because sometimes it goes from land to water. Hmm, there's another one right there. Those big long legs so it can jump. Its eyes on the top of its head so it can see. There's a um, bumblebee or a honeybee pollinating a vascular plant. Oh, got it again. Look at that tongue. Look at that. It's like it's got fingers on it. That is so awesome. So. As you watch this, please think 
consider, ooh, here's my head. Consider what you see, what you think, and what you wonder. You will go to your journal and you will write this down. I'll go to that in just a second. Let me go over all the directions. Phew. When thinking about what an ecosystem is and how it works, how do you feel about those creatures being consumed? Consume means being eaten. How do you feel about that? And try to make some bigger connections here. Think about the ecosystem and all the things that we taught you in the past few weeks. What I'm really interested in is that energy pyramid. Please go to your journal and write down the new definitions we have learned and reviewed. So let's just go ahead and hop there. So we click on there and we go to our workbook. I already have it right here. Please make a copy to get started. So all you do, let me move my head again. All you do is make a copy. Boom. Title it whatever you like and then you can start making files so you can be organized for your Google Drive and have things where you want them so you know where they are. Now, back to mine. After you watched the video, what did you see, what did you think, and what did you wonder? What relationships did you see? Please take a moment to write it down. What do you think is going on in the ecosystem? Think about it, write it down. What did you wonder? What bigger picture are you asking questions about? And remember what I said before, to me, science is making connections. So looking at the bigger picture, that idea of an ecosystem, relationships between living and non-living things, what relationships are you thinking about? After you've thought about that for a little bit, when thinking about what an ecosystem is and how it works, do you feel differently about those creatures being consumed or eaten? So please think about all those things, adaptations, populations, communities, energy flows, habitat, its niche, its job, all these things. After you've answered that one, go to your vocabulary review and write down your definitions. Review, new, review, review, review. So there's the new one. And what's our synonym for niche? A job. What is the job? After you're done with your vocabulary, take a look at this diagram of the life cycle of a frog. Our focus this week is how an organism's niche slash job changes at various stages of its life cycle. Can you explain how this organism fits into that idea? How does the job change? Hmm, I talked about it with the chicken. Can you make the connection to the frog and the eggs? Finally for today, look at these pictures of a fawn and an adult deer. What is the difference in their job from baby to adult. How does it fit into the bigger picture of an ecosystem? How are they alike? How are they different? But more importantly, what's the job of a baby fawn? What's the job of an adult deer? This is a buck, this is a male. So females are called does, they don't have these. So what is the job of this adult male? deer or buck. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson and I will see you in just a couple of days. Stay safe, boys and girls. Bye-bye.